Hi, everybody. I would like to introduce my friend, uh, Janelle, uh, Janelle Vital oh. of uh, Love with Janelle. Janelle is a sexual empowerment coach and a shame free relationship. I love that term, shame free relationship uh, coach based in the Bay Area. Yeah. And she works with people of all kinds, all genders, but she's been focusing a lot on women recently. And mm -hmm. uh, today she's going to talk about desire and uh, some things, you know, especially in these times when desire is often hard to come by. I know it's like, you know, I know you posted that video on TikTok, Janelle, of like desire evaporating. And I just resonated so hard with that. It's like, <laughs> that's what I feel like, totally. what I feel like in this whole thing. So I know yeah. that a lot, of, a lot of people have felt that way where it's like you're stuck in here and there's like responsibilities and kids and all of that and desire is hard to come by. So Absolutely. what are going to say is going to be helpful to, to everybody. So uh, let's start with what desire means. What does it mean for me? Well, my favorite definition of desire is what Esther Perel says about desire, which is it is to own the wanting. And what I think she means by that is desire is to really allow yourself to believe that you deserve to feel pleasure and you deserve to experience aliveness. And um, there's two different kinds of desire that I think is really important to talk about when it comes to women specifically. So there's responsive desire or spontaneous desire. Spontaneous desire is very much what it sounds, right? It's like you're at the grocery store and like see someone cute and you're like, woo, suddenly I'm having a dirty thought and I'm like getting aroused and it's kind of inappropriate, but kind of hot, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of us experience that, but it tends to be more men who experience that. Um, I, you know, I as a woman do experience that, but women typically experience responsive desire, which means that we experience desire as a result of, of um, things happening to us, right? So like, um, you know, your partner like looks you up and down and tells you you're, you're gorgeous and you're like, oh, well, hello, you know, and you start to feel this like little tingle of, of something. Um, you know, or your, your partner is um, massaging you and telling you that, you know, like he loves seeing you happy or, you know, what, whatever it is, just helping you like relax and feel seen is a, is a really big part of desire for women. And so I've seen a lot of women beating themselves up like, oh, I'm just, I'm just not a very sexual person or like something's wrong with my libido when actually our desire is just very different than men's because we're not just like getting turned on at the drop of the hat necessarily. I mean, sometimes, <laughs> but more often it's really about allowing yourself to give in to um, being desired is a big one for women versus like men usually want to desire another women like want to feel desired. And that's part of being responsive to mm -hmm. the circumstances. So that can be really just like healing and can help a lot of women let go of shame to be like, oh, wow. So like I have to create the circumstances um, and allow myself to be open to the circumstances where my desire can blossom. Hmm. That's amazing. The whole thing about spontaneous and responsive desire. I mm -hmm. feel like I have that with food. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like I always describe people as, uh, like, you know, a lot of my friends have foodies who also just want to go to fancy restaurants. And I'm like, I'll go, if you take me to a fancy restaurant, I'll enjoy it, but I'm not going to seek it out. So maybe I have responsive desire when it comes to food. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but that's a great thing. And that's, that's so, such a common problem or issue that comes up in relationships too, I imagine, totally. especially between men and women or people who are, if one person is spontaneous or uh, one, and one person is responsive. So right. besides the spontaneous versus responsive part, what are yeah. some other issues or challenges that you see that women face with desire or being connected to a desire? You know, I think part of owning the wanting, as I said at the beginning, is really believing that you are worthy of desire and pleasure. And those things don't even have to be sexual, but like just, you know, getting out of your headspace of, I need to serve others and I need to take care of my to-do list and being able to sink into your senses is like such a huge challenge for a lot of women who are like, go, 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 you know, like go getters with, with being moms or being, you know, um, having running a business or being employees or whatever. So I think a really beautiful practice for women in terms of a believing that they deserve 
to experience desire and be getting out of their heads and into their bodies is to start tapping into just the sensuality of the day to day. Hmm. And sensuality has like a very sexual connotation, but like sensuality literally means of the senses, hmm. right? And I love this quotation that's like, lose your mind and come to your senses. Wow. Like quite literally, how do you get out of your head and into your body? Like that is the smallest thing that women can do on the daily to reclaim their ownership of desire, meaning to believe like, oh, I deserve this because I am alive. I'm a human being, right? It can seem so like heady and ethereal. Like, how do I believe that I'm worthy? It's like, wow, all it takes is every single day to be like, I'm taking some deep breaths as I wash the dishes. And instead of feeling hurried, like feeling the soap and the warm water on my skin and being like, God, that feels really lovely. Or to like eat a piece of fruit slowly and like enjoy the sweetness, let the juice drip down your face a little bit. Like, you know, giggle and listen to the wind and the birds. Like it's, you know, it's, it's it sounds like very romantic, right? With a capital R and, and because it is like, there's a way that tapping into your senses just like really helps you feel more alive and connected to your body, which in turn helps you understand what desire is as it's, it doesn't have to be this like checklist of like, these are the things that turn me on. It's like, how do I just invite sensual pleasure? And you can do it on the daily. You can do it every day with small things like that. That's amazing. So it's almost, it almost sounds a lot like being mindful and uh, like mindful yeah. and, and some totally. ideas. That's totally. Cool. So, uh, so you t- we talked about the sense of being like, so, this, so there are two challenges that you talked about. One is the spontaneous and responsive desire. Like a lot of women have responsive desire. So, and that's a source of shame and, and, and all that. And then uh, you talked about the feeling of being unworthy of, of desire. Where does that come from? Where does that feeling of being unworthy come from? Growing up in a judgmental patriarchal culture that tells you that you are not good enough, that you're not worthy enough unless you buy these products and look this certain way. And mm. I think that we're finally at this moment in time where people are really starting to resist those messages. There's so much anti body shaming um, messages that are happening now. At least, you know, I'm seeing a lot on who I follow on social media. I'm seeing a lot of empowerment people being like, look, we can all love in different ways. We can all look different ways and we're all worthy. Um, but still, we're just, we're, we're really fighting an uphill battle in terms of our own social conditioning. So it's super normal to yeah. feel like I am not worthy, you know, and then also for women, so much of our conditioning is about pleasing and caretaking others, yeah. right? Which, which doesn't put our narrative and our story at the center of things. It's like, we are at the periphery to the man's story, right? In terms of just like the way the, the story of, you know, history or even like any movie that you saw up until what, like, the year 2000, you know, it's like, um, yeah, the, the male experience has been at the center of our cultural story. And so like, of course, women feel like undervalued and they've internalized that. Wow. Yeah. That makes, I hear, I, I hear that a lot from my clients too, both the totally. thing about, uh, I am a busy mom or, you know, busy career person and I just don't have the time for myself. Sometimes both. It's like both a mom and a career person and doing a right. lot of things. And being in quarantine, you know, and, and something I want to say about, about like desire and pleasure in quarantine right. is, you know, there are these daily practices you can do that I was saying earlier about like really tapping into all of your, all of your senses but you can also reclaim self-pleasure in any number of ways from non-sexual to sexual. So like, we're going to talk about resources at the end, but a book I love is Sex for One by Betty Dodson, which is all about reclaiming masturbation and self-touch and how do you just like gently run your fingers over your own skin and massage your breasts. Maybe you take some lotion and just like caress your entire body and and like in just like a very sensual connected way Mm -hmm. Um, maybe you masturbate and take some extra time to really feel your thighs and your your Mm -hmm. pussy lips and just like really enjoying a slow slow down sensual pleasure experience can be really wonderful and even if you don't feel like aroused right we were saying in quarantine we both feel kind of like libido-less 
you don't need to feel aroused, especially as a woman, right? Because your desire is responsive. So you just start with the like grounding and the breathing and the sensual slow touch activity and you're going to start to feel more and more connected to it. Yeah. And I imagine it's okay if you're not aroused by that either. It's like just ple- oh. pleasure and desire don't have to be sexual at all. Well, and I was going to say earlier, I was like, you know, it's also okay to just not feel a lot of desire right now in quarantine. Mm-hmm. Like if you're beating yourself up because you're not experiencing a lot of desire, that's not really helpful. Um, why not just like go through the ebb and flow of life? And like right now is a weird, hard time in, in human history. And like, it's okay to not always be like, I'm so in touch with my desire. It's like, yeah, you can just feel kind of, you can, you can feel not that in touch with it for now. If that's fine. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. (laughs) That's fine too. Yeah. But you know, what's been really helping me also, and this Mm -hmm. is like great tie into talking about photography is I'm just freaking loving making TikToks because it's my only excuse to wear cute clothes, put on makeup and just like, dance and like feel in my body oh my god it feels so good so like I think that's why so many people are like flocking to TikTok in quarantine because it's just so fun um and you know a big part of of being like allowing yourself to be photographed or to be filmed um is just like letting yourself be the object of the gaze like for women that can be really so so sexy and there's there's a lot of um, problematic stuff about being at the center of the gaze too, right? You know, and you, like you wrote an essay about that. And I think women can reclaim that though. Like, are you, do you choose to be at the center of the gaze because it arouses you? If so, heck yeah. Nice. So I, I really encourage women to, um, to enjoy, like even in quarantine, like put on the cute outfit and put on the makeup. Like even if you don't, you know, um, do like a photo shoot although I see you've been doing webinar photo shoots which is so awesome like even if you don't do that like you could take a picture of yourself in your fancy dinner outfit at the dinner table and post it to Facebook like hey y'all having a fancy dinner with you tonight right like there's a lot of creative ways but I think like allowing yourself to just get dressed up and feel um feel beautiful and intentional in quarantine is like a great idea (laughs) thanks that's uh that's that's really really good uh I was about to say something yeah. and I lost the thread. Yeah. Okay. I remember that. Uh, going back to the idea of uh, sexuality, I mean, desire and pleasure, not just being sexual. I, I know that in some cases, you know, I mean, actually a lot of cases, unfortunately, there are women who've experienced various kinds of trauma or abuse, which, which kind of affects their ability uh, to, to connect with their desire and uh, really? pleasure. So for, and unfortunately, that's a, that, that, that's a lot of women. Uh, a lot. I wish sure. that, was, that number was much smaller, but I can't tell you the number of, uh, you know, when I have con- consultation clients with uh, calls with clients, how much half and that, that comes up. It's, it's, yeah. And I imagine the same is, uh, is true for your clients. Yeah. So for women who are in that situation, who might be like, okay, I'm not ready to like try something that's, you know, from Betty Dodson's book or whatever. What are some ways that they can get in touch with their design pleasure? I think a big thing is, giving yourself permission to have boundaries and to go really slowly. Mm. I think there can be a lot of judgment in our super like sex obsessed culture that if you're not, you know, like rare and a go, then, you know, maybe it's like something's wrong with you. It's like, wow, no, you can take as much time as you want to feel safe, like at every step of the process. Um, and, you know, you know, taking deep breaths and just like holding holding someone's hand or even holding your own hands. Um, I went to a pleasure class by our, our colleague and somatica friend, Simone, who was saying like, you have so many nerve endings in your hands. And she just instructed us all to caress our own hands. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like even just that is so grounding and connective. And um, so I think like a lot of the coming home to yourself exercises for women are really useful. Like the tapping into sight, smell, taste, touch in really gentle ways um but yeah just giving yourself permission to have boundaries with the people you're connecting with and to be okay with going slowly and taking your time that's fantastic Um, yeah knowing what happened to you is not okay and it's not your fault and you can very very slowly um you know reclaim your sense of self if slowness is what you need to to heal yeah so the main message is it's okay to be where you are 
can explore at your own pace. And then that's what I'm hearing. Okay, awesome. Going back to uh, to photography, I, I I really appreciate that you brought up your TikToks because they're so awesome. Um, and I know uh, <laughs> and, uh, just you know for for the purposes of the audience, like Janelle and I have worked on you know together on collaborated on many photo shoots before, and we always yeah. Uh, it's always a fun experience to see how uh, to work with you on photos because you're so comfortable in front of the camera and so like in your body and, and, and so on. How did that happen to you? Like, how did you get so comfortable? Most people, especially most women are, you know, they have a very hard time being comfortable with the idea of being photographed because there's so much that comes up around body image and, and that is regardless of like size or age or anything. Like, that is just a Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. So how did how well, was around that? How did you get so comfortable? I was really lucky to have a mom who was really passionate about getting us into extracurricular activities. So mm -hmm. I had to do like a lot of theater and performing from a very young age, which just got me really used to being in front of people, which has been great like professionally too, because I don't feel scared to like get up in front of a group of people and talk. Mm -hmm. But I still I mean, that being said, I get nervous. I, 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 I say that's different than fear because, well, I mean, it's, it's one kind, but like, I get very nervous. It's like, okay, my heart's racing. I have a somatic reaction of like preparing, you know, I feel flushed, um, anxious, like those things definitely happen. And, um, you know, in, in, in a photo shoot context, like I will definitely feel a little self-conscious, like, oh my God, like, can you see my cellulite? You know, do I look fat? Like those, those thoughts for sure happen to me. I think I've just developed a way of being with those thoughts mm. that feels a little bit um, more nurturing than either just like telling them to go the hell away, which can work for some people, or just like letting them sabotage me. I have this like visualization I do with a lot of my like negative self judgment talk where I imagine that they're a saboteur in a trench coat, like a spy coming to like mess up my, you know, life in that moment. And instead of just like, shooting them or like letting him shoot me I'm like hey let's have a let's have a cup of tea like let's sit down and like what you know what's up you know so I just try to like be with be with the thing be with the guy in the trench coat while also still doing my thing and like both can be true at once like I can have a little trench coat guy on my shoulder and I'm like yeah he's there but I'm just still doing my own thing like I don't think being fearless is about having no fear I think it's just about like learning how to how to live with your fear simultaneously with doing whatever the heck you want. <laughs> that is such a profound yeah. insight. Like the whole idea of, you know, we have this ideal of like, you know, being fearless in society that you have no fear, you have no emotions, you just kind of go. And that's true for men and women both. And it's like, it's totally. About that. It's about being with it. Uh, yeah. Before this conversation, you mentioned something about Gwyneth Paltrow. I kind of. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was saying um, that all the women who are watching this should check out episode three of the Gwyneth Paltrow show Goop. And I think a lot of her messaging is like kind of for bougie white women, which like I'm not that into that. But this particular episode was so cool. It was really empowering. It was about how to um, reclaim desire, you know, on this very subject. It was about like female sexuality and like what are the myths that have been standing in the way of women really getting in touch with their sexuality. And for the show, they hired a few like, coaches and experts, and one of the sexuality coaches had the women eye gaze with each other, which like brought up a lot of profound emotion to be seen and to witness. Mm. And so um, you can do that at home with your partner, or you can do a mirror meditation. You know, I assign that to my women's group, where you just take some deep breaths and gaze into your own eyes in the mirror which can be extremely painful, but also really nourishing simultaneously, right? Because both things can be true at once. Yeah. And while you're doing that, you can tell yourself mantras of affirmations. Even if they don't feel real, you are building the muscle, the emotional muscle memory that allows them to start to feel more real, like mm -hmm. actually creating grooves in your brain that allow these positive thoughts to, to be. So yeah, doing eye gazing with yourself and the mantras, um, is, is really, really useful. Mm -hmm. And then another thing that happened in the show that I loved was they all took like beautiful artsy photos of each other in various stages of undress with like, like roses and props. And like, they just like express themselves through, through photography and being seen because again, female desire, um, a lot of it is about responding to your stimulus and like, mm -hmm. oh, claiming ownership of, 
I am worthy of being looked at and being beautiful, you know, regardless of how I look. Um, yeah, I just thought that was, I thought that was so cool. And of course they also hired Betty Dodson, who I was talking about earlier and did like a whole, you know, masturbation components and yeah, it's a, it's a cool show. It's a cool resource for, um, for women. I was impressed. Awesome. So coming to, uh, we're coming kind of coming to the to the close of this talk. So if we if our audience like if they had to take away like up to three things from this, uh, you know everything that you said. If you wanted you know the women listening to talk to do three things or you know 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 or remember three things, what would they be? You are worthy of desire and pleasure simply just by being an irreplaceable human being, and there's no one else like you on this planet and you are alive and so you deserve to feel pleasure and to connect with your senses another thing is to really embrace whatever it is that you desire even if it's not sexual so like to really enjoy like uh, going outside and sitting with the trees and feeling light flickering on your skin and like hugging trees you know or maybe it's um you really want to dominate your partner uh who's a man and that's extremely socially um you know that's just like not what society says like is supposed to be the gender dynamic but regardless of like where you are on the spectrum of like what kinds of things you desire really letting yourself know like you are not abnormal there are other people like you even if your partner doesn't necessarily want what it is that you desire there's nothing wrong with you mm -hmm. and you don't have to be ashamed um of, of who you are and what you want. And then a third thing I would want women to take away. Um, I think that just like um, pushing yourself up against the discomfort of feeling insecure or feeling fearful can be really, really, really good for you. And mm -hmm. sometimes you have to be awkward or like create, create new experiences through discomfort in order to learn and grow. So for instance, doing the photo shoot, even though you're worried about your cellulite, doing the eye gazing in the mirror, even though it feels really hard and telling yourself mantras. There's a way that like being discomfort can, being uncomfortable can really help you understand like where you need to grow, where your edges are, and you like start to push through them. And that's where the growth happens, you know? And I think for a lot of women who've experienced extreme trauma, like you got to go super slowly, you know, stopping at each stage of the process of reclaiming your pleasure and desire. Um, but yeah, regardless of what pace you go at, like there's that those little zones of discomfort where it's really great to to like edge into because you learn so much about yourself there. Wonderful. So, what are some uh, for women who want to follow up on what you said and and you know dive into some resources? What are some great. resources you can recommend? Well, we already talked about Betty Dodson's Sex for One and the Goop episode three, which I think is called The Pleasure Is Ours. Mm -hmm. I really love um, Dr. Emily Nagoski's book, um, which is called Come As You Are. Um, Come As You Are. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, Come As You Are is amazing. I think that's that's a wonderful resource. That's my favorite book for women's sexuality, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think those are, those are wonderful resources. Um, there's a great novel that I'm reading right now called Three Women, which like is, you know, pretty, it's pretty popular. Um, and then my friend just got me a book called Untamed, which I think is also a novel. I haven't started it yet, but I think it's, um, I think it's supposed to be really exciting and interesting. Oh, the, and you know, there's also a book about trauma called Healing Sex that I thought was really, really useful. And that can be great for women who've had, who've had some negative sexual experiences. I'm a huge fan of everything that Esther Perel has ever written. Um, okay. You know, so specifically she wrote A Mating in Captivity about like how do you maintain desire in a long-term relationship yeah. that's very useful for this particular subject awesome so i'm gonna i'm definitely uh, for the for anyone in the audience i'm gonna list out these resources that janelle has uh, suggested and put put that in a post uh, right. or uh, for everyone to to know know about and finally janelle how can people follow up with you and get to know about what all the awesome work that you are doing tell us actually about some of the things that you're doing i know you'll you're launching a lot of new things. You have a fabulous TikTok and all of that. So tell us all about it. <laughs> sure. Well, I am about to launch a membership program for people who want to go on a journey of letting go of shame and fear. And there's going to be like structured things we're going to work on each month. Um, that's I'm really, really excited about that. And I 
just did a membership group specifically for women. Uh, and so we're going to have like different themes depending on like if you're in a, in a partnership or if you're alone. So I'm really looking forward to that. And you can find out more, more about that at lovewithjanelle.com. And I am also um, very active on TikTok. I recommend seeing my work there because I feel like that encapsulates all of my ideas in like nice little 15 second chunks that are like mostly mostly funny, good edutainment. I'm also on YouTube at Love with Janelle and Instagram at Love with Janelle and Facebook, of course. And Janelle is spelled Jane with an L, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes people get it wrong. That that makes sense. I'll I'll make sure to share that. But yes, yeah. Love with Janelle, Janelle, Jane, Jane with an L, everywhere. Mm-hmm. On exactly. All exactly. That's, that's where people can find you. All right. Thank you exactly. so much for your time, Janelle. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Very, very useful. And I imagine that uh, whoever watches this video will find it extremely helpful, especially in you know quarantine time. So Good. Okay. Good. Uh, thank you so much. Happy quarantine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you sending you sending you love and sending everyone love who's watching this. All right. Bye. Have a wonderful day. Bye.